Okay, the next step is going to be a cleavage step. Uh, we have fructose 1,6 bisphosphate that will be cleaved into two three carbon molecules. Fructose 1,6 bisphosphate is a six carbon molecule, so we haven't lost any carbons and we're not going to in glycolysis. It will be split into two unequal fragments. As far as unequal, they both have three carbons, but one of them is going to be an aldose sugar. This one, D-glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is an aldose sugar, a triose. And then dihydroxyacetone phosphate will be the keto sugar. If you were to write this one out here, I'll, I'll put a diagram here. Then you would see one, two, three, four, five, six. If we're cleaving it here, half of the molecule is going to have to have the ketone because, again, this is a keto sugar, fructose 1,6 bisphosphate phosphate is. So now we have aldolase, which is a chemical butcher. It is going to cleave this six carbon molecule into two, three carbon, one aldose, one keto sugar. The problem is that from this point on is that we need to have um, identical molecules. We want both of them to be in the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. This reaction has a an equilibrium constant that favors dihydroxyacetone. So again, this reaction is going to have to be pulled forward. But if you're using enough of the product, then that's how it's going to be overcome. So dihydroxyacetone phosphate is going to be converted to three, I'm sorry, glyceraldehyde three phosphate. And now we're going to have two identical molecules of glyceraldehyde three phosphate that can then participate in the rest of the pathway. This is catalyzed by triose phosphate isomerase. This is an isomerization and it is not regulated. Both compounds are going to be trioses, but we're going from a keto sugar to an aldose sugar. This one has a small delta, positive delta G of, of 0.58 kilocalories per mole, but the utilization of this product being pulled from future reactions will overcome this very small delta G. Okay, overall what this slide is saying is that glycolysis has several reactions that have high negative uh, delta G. So if you were to add them all, uh, the pathway overall is highly exergonic. So a summary thus far before we continue, in the first stages of glycolysis, glucose will be converted to two, three carbon molecules of glyceraldehyde three phosphate, which is a triose, aldo triose sugar. The key intermediate was from step three, and that is fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. This key intermediate is also going to be used in a feed forward activation of pyruvate kinase, which is step 10. The enzyme that catalyzes the most important rate limiting step is PFK1 specifically. PFK2 will be regulatory. PFK is going to be subject to allosteric as well as covalent modification for control. Okay, moving on, steps six through 10 are gonna be what are known as the payoff phase. And steps one and three cost us uh, two ATPs, one from each step. Now in steps six through 10, what you'll notice is that um, you have two, we're starting with two three carbon molecules of glyceraldehyde three phosphate. And so I'm only gonna trace one pathway, so everything's gonna be multiplied by two. So step six is going to be an oxidation reaction as well as a phosphorylation. But the important thing here is that it's an oxidation. It is catalyzed by glyceraldehyde three phosphate dehydrogenase. So it's a dehydrogen so it's a dehydrogenase that will be catalyzing an oxidation. We go from glyceraldehyde three phosphate we're going to reduce NAD in this reaction. And very important, here we have a phosphate ion from the cytosol. So this is not from an ATP, it's just a free floating inorganic phosphate that we're going to catalyze a reaction 
to put on a C1 of the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So that is going to cost energy, but the oxidation is going to be exergonic, so when you add them together, it will proceed. Okay, so here we have the NADH plus H, so we have a reduced electron carrier that can then find its way to the mitochondria to, it's gonna use a shuttle system to get those electrons into the ETS, but it will get them there nonetheless. Okay, again, we have an addition of a phosphate group plus an electron transfer. The oxidizing agent would be um, NAD+. Remember, NAD is niacin-derived. Niacin is vitamin B3. This is a vitamin, B vitamin derivative, as is the FAD, which is the other electron carrier we'll be discussing, which is a vitamin B2 derivative of riboflavin. So we have it reduced. It has picked up two electrons. It bonds with a, a hydrogen and then we have a hydrogen ion here. Okay, water is used um, if you were to break down the actual equation, the full equation, you'll see it's used on both sides of the equation so we can leave it out. But here's what's happening. Here we have step one, oxidation of the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. You'll notice the delta G prime is negative 43.1 so the oxidation is highly exergonic. The phosphorylation part of it is endergonic. So and if you add this up, actually this is going to be slightly endergonic reaction once this coupled reaction is, is considered together. But overall, all of the reactions surrounding this metabolic pathway are in this metabolic pathway when we add them all up it's still exergonic so it will proceed so here you can trace where each hydrogen goes so from C1 we're losing a hydrogen to we are reducing NAD and becoming oxidized here's our NAD and then here's the reduced form so this is the oxidized form this is a reduced form then we have a water splitting here we're going to pick up an oxygen to make a carboxylate and then we have two extra hydrogens. This second phase we're going to put a phosphate group on the C1 and we're going to make water back. So again water was on both sides of the equation so yeah that's why it doesn't have to be written in the reaction. All right, so looking at the overall reaction, again, it's twofold. We have an oxidation and a phosphorylation, putting a phosphate on C1. So now we have 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And this reaction was catalyzed again by glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Okay, step seven, this is, again, we're in the payoff phase, so we're gonna start creating ATP. We have one three bisphosphoglycerate converted to three phosphoglycerate. <laughs> this is Brenda, the Not-So-Good Witch, signing off for today. See you next time on Dr. Bond's Science Theater.